think we're streaming so that's good I'm just gonna go and post my streaming activity on Twitter and stuff just to get people who might be interested to watch me um, to, yeah to watch me um, so I'm gonna go ahead and link my twitch oh yeah yeah I am I am streaming okay excellent okay so let's post it on twitch um, now streaming on twitch and yep i think this is a pretty good summary now streaming on twitch twitch.tv i will not twitch on games and life why communicate and how to leverage it hey man okay we're gonna make it really short we're not gonna make it too long um i'm gonna make it a little streamlined um but i'll just wait for a few minutes for people to basically pour in join maybe join chat we'll see um, but what I'm targeting to be able to do is to talk about communication and maybe in the span of maybe 30 35 minutes so I'm gonna start a timer actually so that I don't um, I don't overextend so okay times running um, I have posted on Twitter I posted on my personal Facebook so that's good um, probably post on my own channel as well. Now streaming. Yep. Yep. I'm just copy pasting stuff. It should be fine. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, we have an interesting topic that I want to talk about today. It's about communication. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah so we'll probably be finished by around 9 9 50 9 50 p.m would be good i'll start at around 9 09 so we have two minutes i'm quite excited to talk about communication because um that's primarily how i also sharpen myself and learn it's when I talk about what I currently understand about something and then um, refine it by how I actually talk about it. And also get refined by hearing other people's perspectives um, when they tell me what they think. Um, so my learning is really uh, thanks to others as well. but it takes some discipline to really grind out the things that need to be studied um, and i think communication is something that's uh, really really important i think when it comes around the ages of like 25 22 to, to like tw 22 to like 30 i would i would say because mm -hmm. um, like in college, you'd normally focus on something that you're studying primarily, like your craft, like if it's business, marketing, engineering, or the arts. But eventually, once you get out of the college, you'll find out that, you know, you have to market yourself. You have to sell your services. You have to sell whatever products that you have. And that means talking to people and knowing what's important to people and being able to say, hey, I can do that. So I think, I think communication is, covers so much ground. Um, not just in marketing and sales, but also personal life, family life, relationships, um, relationships with your intimate partner, your children, your siblings, your parents, strangers, friends, um, even with yourself. There, there's also uh, intrapersonal communication. Um, yeah. And some people struggle with that, you know, correcting bad habits of how they actually talk to themselves. Um, but primarily, we'll not be talking about intrapersonal conversations on this talk. We'll just talk about how it would be like to talk to um, to other people. So it's 9.09, .09, so I'll just go ahead and start, uh, start talking about it. Um, 
I'm just gonna go to my creator dashboard where I should be able to see where people chat and say hello. Hey, it's Demi. Hello. Hey there. Thank you for joining. Uh, we have three viewers. Hello. Thank you for being here. So I'm gonna start talking about um, how I currently understand communication and how I think it can be better improved. So for full for full um, disclosure, I didn't take any uh, degrees in linguistics or communication or journalism. I don't do communications for a living. Um, for a living, what I do, uh, but by, by the way, for those who are new to the stream, my name is Darren. And uh, basically what I do for a living is tell computers how to talk to each other, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's making sure that machines talk to each other properly. And um, you know how, it, like, you know, when you order something in Lazada, that's basically your computer, your cell phone, talking to another computer, like some other server, saying, hey, you want to make a purchase. And there are those kinds of parallels that I also will be touching on later. But what I want to talk about is how important communication is um, uh, in our personal lives, in our daily lives, even in like in, in the tech industry and like in startups, because those are the areas that I am currently in. Um, so I build apps, I build uh, mobile apps, websites, I build um, different kinds of things. And I think that's, that's enough of, a, an, of an intro for some background on me. So. At the end of this uh, conversation, what I want to be able to uh, uh, deliver for you guys would be um, great levels of clarity when it comes to communication so that you are well informed and clear in understanding what's going on so that you can say yes to the things that um, uh, work well with you or agree with you or people that, that work well with you um, and how to also set your boundaries properly. Because I think that a lot of the difficulty in being able to say no or saying that, you know, this crossed a line that shouldn't have been crossed is the, the chaos from, from what happened, you know, not being able to understand how everything worked. So I'm going to be elaborating on those communication failures by um, uh, explaining or sharing different types of wins and loses in communication, like scenarios. Um, and I'm also going to explain, I'm going to start off with why communication is important and then talk about scenarios that are good and scenarios that are bad. And that'll basically lead us to a conversation of what the dangers are in communication so that I can basically give that backdrop so that I can give you guys some thought, some of my thoughts on how I deal with, um, uh, with those kinds of uh, situations. Uh, hopefully, if you enjoy this uh, chat until 9.50 or around 30, 40, 40 minutes from now, um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope that you can give me some feedback on uh, how I go about these things. You can DM me on Twitter or join my Discord channel. So let's go ahead, start talking about it. Um, so importance of uh, communication. So I like thinking about it from a perspective of gaming because in games, we basically have some task that we actually need to accomplish, right? So for example, if you play Valorant or if you play um, Dota 2 or League of Legends, you'll know how important communication is because there's another set of five other people that's trying to beat you up, right? It's basically competitive games, whether it's video games, right? Or actual sports like uh, basketball. And um, when it comes to, when it comes to uh, these really hard games, great coordination is necessary. And that's actually how you can be able to uh, achieve great things together. Because um, if, if you've experienced playing ranked games or competitive games, uh, whether in video games or in, in competitions in school, you'll know that the, ones, the, the teams that actually play really well are those that actually communicate and understand each other. Um, so that happens in shooter games, that happens in uh, raids, in, in Dungeons and uh, in, in Warcraft. Um, so this is a picture from, uh, if you know of the meme about Leroy Jenkins, where there's a team of like um, adventurers planning out how to go about, you know, defeating the dungeon. And then there's this just one guild member that just runs off and starts, starts the whole raid. And they all basically get wiped because Leroy Jenkins came in and, and basically 
uh, started it off, right? Um, and this is an anime uh, called Log Horizon, where there's this really master strategist that basically has an overview of how all of their teammates are actually running, like how much HP and how much uh, mana they have. And he's able to coordinate them effectively. And that's how he, he maximizes the skill of their teammates, his teammates. Um, I don't really know much about basketball, but I just threw this in here because I think that uh, basketball is something that is universal. Um, and that's technically how I want to um, talk about things. Um, you would likely know about uh, other cases of like extremely coordinated people, whether like that might be in an orchestra, that might be in some kind of play. It's people being able to do these great things because they communicate well with each other and they know how to be um, um, aligned. So if you're curious about how professionals actually talk to each other, there's this, um, there's this uh, video on Dota 2's uh, The International. They call it True Sight. And True Sight basically gives you an, uh, a, a preview of how professionals uh, operate basically inside of that box where they're competing against other five you know, esports um, teams. And you'll see how interesting their communication patterns are like they're actually quite forgiving they are they are ruthless when it comes to you know polishing mistakes and, and getting better but there's a lot of space for you know um, making mistakes and forgiving each other and those are like really conducive environments for teamwork um, and that's what makes their communication effective it's because i can trust my team that you know they're not like the enemy that we're trying to defeat is the one that's on the other side of the team, like the other side of the, the fence. It's not, it's not anyone else who's in this box or it's basically the other en the people out, the enemies basically are, are who you need to focus your efforts on. So communication is just really important. Uh, it also has impacts in war. If you guys have watched the imitation game on how Alan Turing actually helped uh, in deciphering communications in the war. Um, one of the great uh, revolutions was uh, the printing press. Industri uh, like, like, uh, this basically revolutionized, revolutionized the access to information. Um, and this basically allowed people to get better at reading and writing and re increasing the reach of information. Right? Um, when you think about it, the internet is also one of those great leaps. Um, if we go back way, way earlier into society, um, communications enabled us to achieve great things, right? It's not just about like uh, winning an esports championship or winning an NBA tournament. Um, back then, it was you know uh, being able to like conquer or defeat mammoths or like great beasts, and this is because they were able to communicate that hey, I'm not going to be able to eat the whole mammoth. Uh, you know, one person won't be able to eat the whole mammoth, but if we help each other, we're going to be able to have enough food for the next set of days, and we can relax. People saw that value in society and they were able to communicate well with each other. They saw that they were aligned and they were able to help each other. Communication happens as well with your devices. And you know, if you look at the vaster size of things, like once we start conquering multiple planets, um, how do you again coordinate multiplanetary efforts, right? Um, it would still boil down to communications. So um, yeah, so communication is basically very, very important. And what I want to highlight here is that um, it's hard to communicate what you want when you don't know what you want. So being able to set your direction or your objectives is something that is for you to do. And it's quite difficult because looking into yourself is uh, that kind of reflection takes a lot of stamina and courage because you don't know what you'll find. But knowing what you want and knowing what you're worth will enable you to also get what you want. It's gonna help you to negotiate. It's gonna be able to articulate what your truth is and what you're capable of, what you're not capable of. And it's, a, it's gonna enable you to make these kinds of bets on yourself um, to accomplish you know, uh, things, to, to get performance results. So I'll go on and talk about um, uh, wins and loses when it comes to uh, communication. So, if you guys have been, uh, like, if you've been to traditional school, then you would be familiar with, um, 
you'd be familiar with bad group projects, right? So you'd be familiar with bad group projects. You might have like you likely have played one of the roles there. You might have been the overperformer who's like, okay, shit, like I have a bad teammate that's not performing well. Like I, I don't know if I can trust them to do this task that I have to give them. Um, so there's that there's that case of having bad group uh, groupmates. Um, and you may at first you may actually just give them something to do like hey okay is it okay if you do this part of the powerpoint presentation can you do this thing and they're like yeah sure i can do that and then they just suddenly go completely away right they don't completely respond to anything and there's no communication and you're like what is going on you know and you get to the end of the week nothing happened and they haven't done any progress and that's horrible that is an example of bad communication I think everybody's been there, whether in school or at work. Um, the way that I normally address this is basically increase the frequency of check-ins, right? Rather than wait for, you know, give somebody some kind of work that they're supposed to do, that they're supposed to deliver by the end of the week, I'm not going to check in with them only at Friday, right? I'm not just going to check with them on Friday. I'm supposed to check on with them um, regularly. Uh, and this is... This is uh, expensive but it's something that gets the job done um, and at this time sometimes those people actually do uh, not reply sometimes they don't reply right and they reply very sparingly so this is a uh, not having any communication is bad not having frequent communication to align is also bad right um, but uh, initiating the conversation is something that is within your realm of control. And that's something that you can do to improve communications. And if you've done this part already and they're not res re responding, then clearly the problem isn't, uh, isn't within your control anymore at this point. Like it's, it's something that they need to actually do. Now there's, there may be times where they may be unavailable, but um, the reason why you also do multiple check-ins is to also uh, check the consistency of their behaviors, right? Um, you may have the same objectives, you know, finish a, a presentation for school uh, and they say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm sick right now. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm doing groceries with my parents. Um, so you want to be able to check the consistency of the responses of the person that you're working with. This works for your office mates. This works for your classmates. Um, yeah, it's basically check the consistencies of, of what they're doing. If they're not replying, it's, it's bad, right? So that's what happens in bad group projects. You message them, they don't reply. So the other, the next case that I want to talk about is um, both of you actually don't want the same things, right? For example, um, let's let's just look here. So we have an example here in Batman. Uh, Bat uh, Joker basically says the plan is to kill Batman, um, but actually Joker's plan isn't to kill the Batman. He's had multiple times that he could kill the Batman, but he doesn't want to kill the Batman. He actually wants to destroy the Batman, the Batman's identity, the Batman's mind, right? Um, so in those cases, uh, the Joker basically was trying to coordinate with um, the Mafia, and they were saying, hey, the thing that we need to do is kill the Batman. But, you know, Joker actually has a different objective. So from a communication perspective, you're not only supposed to do check-ins at the last point, you should actually check whenever these kinds of um, deviations from the projected objective happens, right? Check in with people. Hey, what's going on, right? What's going on? Like you say that you, you want this thing, but it sees like it looks like you're actually moving the goalpost. So if you don't have the awareness and the discipline to, to do those check-ins and to record the, the actual historical truth of people moving goalposts, right? Then you're not going to have any historical thing to look at and say, hey, you said this is what you were marketing and this is actually where you are now. So are we really aligned? Do we really want the same things? Because you're telling me this and this is where we are. So this is talking about alignment and getting people to, um, getting people to be aligned, right? Getting people to be on the same page. Um, so you want to be able to deal with people who are truthful and uh, want the same things as you. So 
I don't know if you guys are also familiar with um, Daredevil, the Netflix series, but Daredevil basically doesn't want to kill people. And his mentor, Stick, is basically, ah, you gotta kill people. You gotta kill people to get things done. Um, and he basically lied to Daredevil. And, and okay, spoilers. I should probably say spoilers, right? He says that he's not gonna kill people, but then he does. And Daredevil tries to prevent him. That's basically what happens. And that's why it's hard to basically work with these people. It's hard to communicate and uh, coordinate with these people because they want other things and they actually tell you something else. So the way that you address that is do frequent check-ins and keep a historical record of um, people not following through with what they actually say they would be doing. Basically hold people accountable, right? So the next one is basically people who don't want the same things, right? Uh, they basically have something, el they basically want something else. And instead of actually projecting the other objective, what happens is they actually tell you that, hey, I want something else, you want something else. It's basically, we can't work, we can't work with each other, basically. Um, let me just delete these things. Oop. Actually, I'm just gonna delete these things. These ones I think would be easier to delete. Yeah. It's basically, if we want two different things, then let's go our separate ways, right? And um, this is something that I think uh, um, not a lot of people recognize as an option. Um, it, sounds, it sounds silly, but uh, this is just something that you gotta do for yourself sometimes. If you guys want different things, don't work together. Uh, you may have the same direction, right? For example, in Avengers, uh, they both wanted to get the Soul Stone, but they wanted to get it in a different way, right? Um, if you guys watch, um, what's this show again? Uh, what's this show? Um, Lelouch. Uh, this is Code Geass, right? Code Geass. They basically wanted uh, freedom and peace, but one wanted to go through the... Um, through some kind of independence, kind of claiming your independence kind of way. And then another person basically wanted to do it from a, let's fix it from the systems way. Like you go through about through the, through the systems in place. If you guys are familiar with um, Batman as well, um, there were also disagreements with how the Justice League should be run. Like there was a time where Batman was, uh, had plans basically, strategies to disable the different Justice League uh, members. And that basically, uh, um, people were, were, were shocked that Batman would actually do that. And Batman said that that's something that's necessary to do for the Justice League because they are, um, to some extent, some unregulated power. And Batman needed to make sure that there was regulation. And they basically had differences in that sense. And the thing to do there is if you guys, you guys may have the same objective, but uh, want to do it in different ways then that's fine. They're, those are the times that you actually just separate ways. So that's fine. Um, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you can have the same objective, right? Uh, you can have the same objective. If you have different objectives, go about it differently, right? You can also have the same objective. Uh, I'm just gonna slap this on here the same objective, but you're gonna go about it in a different way. This is also a, another case where you're like, okay, then let's not work together. Let's not, let's not do that, right? Um, this is also something that happens in Attack on Titan, I think. Um, but I haven't updated myself on the anime yet, so I just have general notions of, of, of that. And that's technically how you'll see conflict basically in different kinds of movies, right? It's people not understanding each other. That's why uh, these kinds of conflicts are necessary for movies. Because if you, if you get everybody aligned, there's no conflict. Then there's no conflict, there's just work to be done and people who know that they just need to grind out those work. But yeah, um, you may have the same objective or you have different objectives. Those are causes for you to reflect on whether you want to continue uh, teaming up with those people. Um, the next one would be um, 
for you to find people who have the same objectives as you do. And they have the same objectives as you do. And they also have the same values and strategies about going about achieving those objectives. I think this is what's really rare. Uh, it's really rare. And these are the things that should be treasured. Because these are the people that you want to journey with in life. Right? These are the people who align with your values, align with how about going things. And they want the same things. So these are the people that you actually want to continue working with. But just because you have the same objectives and you have the same methods of going about uh, doing things, that doesn't mean that there's no miscommunication. Miscommunication and misunderstandings can still occur. And the thing to fix it here is just do the check-ins. Hey, are we still aligned? Are we still going for the same objectives? There might just be something that's not visible from your perspective that w that made sense for them and their perspective. And those are basically what the check-ins are, are, are supposed to do. It's to check whether, oh, okay, I just didn't see some perspective on, on that side. Okay, I understand now. Let's continue doing the same thing. Um, so one thing that I want to highlight here is that communication uh, is very challenging. If you notice, um, uh, um, if you notice, uh, communication is very challenging because people communicate differently. From Eastern and like Western civilizations, I think Eastern people like Asia, stuff like that, um, communicate more in high context. So they read body language, they read, um, uh, they read more into the context of what the person is currently in. Like for example, um, they basically d don't just read the lines as they are. In Western communication styles, they're very straightforward. They basically just say, you know, what they really mean to say. And that cuts down on a lot of um, miscommunication, uh, misunderstandings. But because people are different, right? We just basically need to learn how to communicate with each other. So this is the thing that I want to call out for you guys. It's basically when you find your tribe or when you find the set of people that you want to continue working with, um, understand that there may be misunderstandings, but those are dealt with by learning each other's communication styles. So that's going to be able to enable you to understand them better and enable them to understand you better. But fundamentally, you guys want to do the same. Th you want to achieve the same things and you want to get the same objectives. So examples here would be learning to communicate, right? If you guys watched Avengers, there was a time there where uh, Ratchet was trying to teach Groot which button to press. And basically he's like, okay, repeat after me what I said. And that's technically what we need to do. It's nothing silly. It's actually a great way to double check with someone if you guys are aligned, if you guys actually understand each other. And that's something that I do regularly with the people that I work with, people that I, 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 I lead and mentor. It's, it's perfectly fine for you to repeat yourself and make a mistake in, in saying what I, I ask you to, to repeat. But that's, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you correct your understanding, right? Um, if you notice in, in, um, if you notice in The Matrix, uh, Morpheus gives Neo the blue pill and the red pill and asks him to make a choice. And what's beautiful about this part of the movie was that it's hard to explain the whole concept of The Matrix to Neo, but the way that Morpheus introduced it was through some kind of analogy, right? And that's what I love to do. I love making analogies. I love writing my own mental models and my maps because this enables me to communicate well with people. But... Um, Maps have their own shortcomings, which I'll talk about in a separate topic. But the fundamental thing here is you want to contextualize what you want to communicate depending on who's receiving it, right? Um, yeah. Sometimes you can't contextualize the message that you want to say for everyone because there's different perspectives, different um, audiences to hear your message. But... I think that when you do have those misunderstandings, what you're supposed to do is just to check in and say, hey, what did this actually mean? It's not to say, you know, it's not like, 
you find one misunderstanding, you're gonna say, oh, this person wants something completely different from what I from what I care about and what's important to me. It's just a misunderstanding. It's just from a different perspective, right? Because when you're talking to someone, that person has their own priorities. They have their own um, sensitivities that the speaker, Morpheus, would be contextualizing it for, right? Um, we see this happening regularly in Twitter and Facebook and social media where people's words are taken out of context. And what happens there is basically people have a misunderstanding and then flag that person as, okay, this is someone that I will not work with. And like, the message may not be completely, you know, in place for you to understand everything. And people are like, well, it's not worth it for me to actually do the check-in. That's expensive. Why would I do that? Who is this person? But then that's basically what causes all of that divide, all of that distrust, right? Um, so if you don't have the space to do the check-ins, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do the check-ins. But what you're supposed to do is say, hey, uh, there is some misunderstanding. Uh, I don't know if this person aligns with me. But you're not supposed to mark them off as someone that I shouldn't work with or I, dis I don't believe in because you don't have enough data. So you're supposed to say, there's a misunderstanding. I don't know this person well enough to make an informed decision of whether I trust what their person's saying or not. I don't have enough information. Some people forget to, to remember that I don't know is an okay thing to say. I don't know enough. I don't know enough to be able to make a decision on this thing. Or um, based on what I know so far, it doesn't make sense. So I may not just have enough context right that's that's better communication that's better communication than making the leaps and bounds and saying hey i have a misunderstanding this is likely someone that i does not align with me. he hates people he um uh this person does not care about life or does not care about the welfare of workers right people and a lot of people uh, in scarcity situations don't have the abundance to actually spend, to read, to understand, to ask. But the minimum thing that you can do instead of spending all of that effort to actually comprehend and understand is say, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know yet and um, it's okay. Uh, if I want to know, then I will. Um, so yeah, it's okay to say I don't know. So going back, um, yeah, there may be times where analogies are misrepresented, misunderstood, but that's because you have to understand that when a cartographer, someone who writes maps, um, the cartographer has a purpose for the map, right? A map uh, for a treasure chest is not going to make sense for a map for irrigation for like a farmer. Maps have different purposes and cartographers, people who draw maps, fashion maps for a specific purpose and even if they do fashion that map for a farmer right i make a map for irrigation i give it to farmers there's also biases coming in from farmers uh, from from the cartographer people drawing maps have their own biases so that's also something to factor in but fundamentally you want to do check-ins if you want to be able to communicate well it takes time but it's how you do great things right so what does it look like to, to do great things. To do great things, these are usually things that you, like if you look at the masters of communication, uh, masters of teamwork, you'll see those things. You'll see, you'll see people, you'll see people, you know, uh, save a great deal of lives in war, right? You'll see great esports players accomplish great things. You'll see dungeons that are high level that are cleared by low level people. You'll see great NBA players, right? And what that looks like is basically people who align at the values level of how to go about certain things and what objectives to achieve, they basically say, hey, we actually want the exact same things. We want to do, this, uh, do things the same way. The frequencies of the misunderstanding would be minimized, right? Fundamentally, this is just trust. It's just trust. I can trust that we're gonna do the exact same things. And this is where a lot of efficiency and skill and mastery occurs. Because 
you're no longer thinking about, hey, are you doing it the same way that, you know, you're, all of these kinds of distractions, all of these wastes of attention, of energy, is just disappears. Because you find the right people who have the same values and hey, I have the same strategies as you. So what does that look like, right? Um, basically, if you look at the whole Avenger series, it's basically people who uh, gathered together to defeat a great evil. And there were times where they were misaligned, you know, civil war. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, they wanted to save the world. And they were able to coordinate it and be able to achieve that great thing. Um, Neo was able to save Morpheus, right? Morpheus needed to trust Neo, Neo needed to trust Morpheus, and they were able to rescue him. And yeah. So those are like the, f like how many cases is that? Five different cases of uh, communication that I wanted to talk about. Um, there are times where people don't respond to you. Those are red flags. Be careful about them. Don't waste your time, right? Set your boundaries. This is not good. This is not acceptable, okay? Um, from my perspective, like this is how I communicate and this is what I, what I want to like highlight for you guys. This is basically my map of communication. Right? I want you guys to see how I perceive communication and how people communicate so that you can understand it and so that you can also set your boundaries. What is acceptable for me may not be acceptable for you. So going back, no communication and just pure misunderstanding, not acceptable to me. I don't want this. Okay. Um, frequent uh, communication with no responses. At first, it may be, you know, it might just be, you know, one-off chances that might just happen once in a once in a blue moon that's that's fine but when it when it becomes some kind of consistent pattern i'm not gonna say it's completely unacceptable but it's for you to investigate why what is going on right what is going on figure it out because if it's an attitude or a character problem then it's not acceptable but if it's really circumstances and they and you can't really work with them because they're unable to then it may not even be just their fault you know it's just something that we're just not going to be able to work well with each other so you just separate um but this is a lot of energy so be careful about when this happens right when there are no responses or very rare responses um the next one is uh, when someone is projecting that they have the same objective as you do and there's a lot of misunderstandings and things keep moving on and there aren't uh, it's not moving towards the direction that you guys want to go about. Um, did, did what I say just make sense? I don't think so. I think I just blabbered. Um, what I'm saying here is that be careful with people who move goalposts. Be careful with people who move goalposts um, and have a habit of deviating from the plan. Right, um, a lot of people may not be able to communicate well, but that's also why you do frequent check-ins. It's to compensate for people's differences in communication styles and dif and differences in communication skill level. But if you guys fundamentally want different things, try your best not to work with these people because there will always be continuous friction because you guys are trying to go about achieving different things. So yeah, be careful about these ones. Um, now you may have uh, so for for these cases, basically don't work don't work with them, right? Don't work with them. For the times when you have um, um, you want the same thing, but you go about it in a different way. In my perspective, um, it's not a completely unacceptable. Uh, it's not a completely unacceptable walk away kind of moment, I think. I think that these are the times where check-ins are also important. Um, because just because you want to go about the different objectives in a different way doesn't mean that you're not allowed to work with them sparingly, you know? Um, like, if we're, if we're looking at it from, from these perspectives, they both still cooperated with each other, right? Uh, Batman still cooperated with the Justice League. 
Um, these two just basically hate each other's guts and basically it was a, I'm not gonna spoil it, but the fundamental thing that I wanna say is that cooperation in these situations is is an option. It's still it's still an option for, for these cases. But you have to mitigate your exposure. Because again, they're gonna go about doing things in a different manner. So be careful. You have to be careful because you're responsible for your journey, your safety, and your resources and your team, right? Or wherever, wherever whatever you're leading. Um so you can still work with these people, but 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 be careful, uh, communicate and like just don't go all in, right? Because um, you guys basically just want to go about the same, achieving the same objective. Um, these are lovely parts. These are lovely parts. So these are like the the nightmare scenarios be careful or step away or don't do this or, or avoid them. These are the things to dream about. So I want you guys to keep your eyes open when you meet people who are in this space. These are people who want the same objectives as you, who have, who have the same values as you, but may just have different communication patterns. If they have different communication patterns, just learn them. Whatever that communication pattern may be, whether it's learning a different language, Japanese, you know, um, you know, uh, sign language. Because fundamentally, you're going the same journey. These are the people to journey with. You just need to be able to communicate with them, right? Um, so this misunderstanding check-in, misunderstanding check-in, this is actually learning. Learning to communicate with each other. And I think that if you build enough, uh, if you build enough skill to communicate well with the people who align with what you you're aiming for, you're just gonna be this traveling group of people that care about the same things. And I think that's fundamentally what Avengers was. You know, they they traveled, they had goals, and they eventually learned how to communicate with each other. Um, yeah, and for these people, like this is this is super rare, but um, there are people who you will align with it, with values and just work well amazingly, and things just click. Things just click. You may have experienced this with your best friend uh, or someone that you work with in your office or your classmate. Um, it's rare to have this within family. It's rare to have this um, um, with uh, intimate relationships, I think. But this is the goal. You want to be able to find people that align with the same set of values. Um, it's kind of sad. Uh, I think that a lot of people, a lot of arguments in family, a lot of arguments in, in relationships are because of these kinds of things, right? Uh, people aren't talking enough. People aren't replying enough. They're not respecting each other well enough. They're not building upon trust well enough. They're not marketing uh, what they say is is important to them. So it's basically lying. It's dishonesty. And the reason why I talk about these things is because I want to enable people to understand those kinds of things and to know those red flags so that you guys can figure out like what, what to do and to, to know what you should be paying attention to. Pay attention to the people around you that enable this because those are the people to work with, those are the people to follow, those are the people to work, to, to learn from. Um, there's a lot of opportunity here. There's a lot, of, a lot of cost and energy wasted here. So be careful, think carefully about what you want. So yeah. Uh, I've spent 45 minutes talking about it. Um, uh, I am basically a storyteller. Um, I like uh, thinking, I like learning, and that's what I do in my blog. I write about these kinds of things. I write about mental models, uh, which are basically these analogies or simplifications for certain concepts um, like learning, like how to achieve something, um, and how to communicate. And yeah, 
If you enjoyed this uh, session, I highly recommend you check out my blog. Um, there's different things that you can check out there. Um, you can check out uh, my reflections, the things that I think about. You can check out my maps or my, my mental models. You can check out uh, a lot of different things. Um, but very likely there's things that struck out for you that's super interesting for you. And I highly recommend you just send me a message on Twitter. Start a conversation, communicate, right? Um, yeah. So thank you for spending your evening with me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's 9.50. I have some people still on chat. You guys might have some questions or stuff. Um, yeah. I'm pretty proud of myself because I, I covered the, the whole thing in 45 minutes. It's a little messy, but you know, there's this mental model that I have called um, prioritization. Um, and in prioritization, one of my mental models, it basically says, just make it work. Just make it work. Doesn't have to be pretty. Doesn't have to be efficient. Doesn't have to be correct yet, right? Because I'm just a student of communication still. I'm not some kind of professor of communication. I'm just making it work. And I hope that this encourages you as well to create your own content. Just make it work. Talk about your stuff. Properly hedge your statements, right? Um, yeah. I hope that inspires you guys to do the same. So yeah, check out uh, my blog or my Twitter. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good stream. Pretty enjoyed it. Yeah. So it's funny. The reason why I recorded this this video, the reason the real reason why I recorded this video, aside from these objectives, is because there's a lot of miscommunication happening around me. And I want to elaborate on how I understand communication so that people can actually, um, people can actually um, understand each other. Um, yeah. There's a lot of different domains to reflect on it. Relationships, intimate relationships, friendships, um, the workplace. And I don't want to keep repeating myself when I explain what the problem of communication is. Like, if we all agree that communication is important, then let's also agree on what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Um, because until we, we peg what is acceptable and what's not acceptable, then what happens is, you know, people get to weasel their way out and say, no, no, we're, we're, we're on the same thing, you know. We have to know what we, we have to be careful about what we say so that people don't get misled. People understand and people can basically say, okay, we're aligned, right? We're here. We're in the good places. This is where we are. This is what we want to be. And I hope you guys find your, um, your tribe, your uh, set of people you adventure with. So yeah, I think that covers it. Uh, I think it's time for me to rest up and play games with my friends. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.